today, March 19th, is the anniversary. It was tonight. It was arguably March 20th on the calendar in Iraq, but it was the night of March 19th that for us here in the United States that the bombing commenced in Baghdad. That George W. Bush opened the gates of hell that led to the death of somewhere between 150,000 and 600,000 Iraqis. Over 4,000 American soldiers. The displacement of at least 5 million Iraqis. An orgy of, of death squad and sectarian violence that continues to this day. I mean, here's the, here's the really poignant, poignant story. This is from today's New York Times. Today's New York Times. Be a second paragraph, by article by Tim Arango. Beginning in the early morning Tuesday with the assassination of the Ministry of Finance official by a bomb attached to his vehicle and continuing for hours, the attacks... Actually, let me read the, the first sentence. Here's the first two sentences of the article. Iraq closed a painful decade just as it began with explosions reverberating around the capital. Beginning in the early morning Tuesday with the assassination of a Ministry of Finance official by a bomb attached to his vehicle and continuing for hours, the attacks were a devastating reminder of the violence that regularly afflicts Iraq. And they seem somehow more poignant coming on the eve of the 10th anniversary of the American-led invasion, which has been marked in the West by new books, academic studies, and polls, retesting public attitudes a, a decade later. And then they talk about the familiar smite of, sight of black smoke over the cityscape. This is, this is amazing. I mean, the, now is the time when Vince Bugliosi, and you know, we, we, in fact, I, I had suggested to Louise and Sean that we should get him on the show today. Apparently he was not available. But Vince Bugliosi wrote this, uh, his name is spelled like it was pronounced Bugliosi, but he drops the G. Um, the guy who wrote Helter Skelter, who prosecuted Charles Manson, he wrote a book, and it was a prosecutor's brief. I mean, he's a prosecuting attorney. It's a prosecutor's brief for the attorney general of any state in the union to prosecute George W. Bush for murder. In fact, the title of the book is The Prosecution of George W. Bush for Murder by Vincent Bugliosi. This book came out in 2008, and it's every bit as relevant today as it was then. At that point in time, it was obvious to all of us that we had been lied into an unnecessary war that was leading to hundreds of thousands of deaths. The devastation of a nation, the devastation of a culture, and, and just in terms of our geopolitical interests, if you buy the notion that a Shiite Iran needs to have something strong on its border to restrain it from an expansionist tendency towards all the Sunni countries around it, then a Sunni-controlled... Saddam Hussein-run government in Baghdad, in, in Iraq, was actually our barrier. I mean, this is, this is why, for a decade, back before W became president, in fact, back before his daddy became president, why, why Americans you know, supported both sides. Actually, we supported both sides, both Iran and Iraq. It's kind of a pox on both their houses. But we particularly supported Saddam Hussein in his war with Iran. Over a million Iraqis and over a million Iranians died in that war. It was a horrible and bloody front. But we supported him in that. Don Rumsfeld went over during, oh, is this the first Bush administration? No, it must have been the Nixon administration. It, it, it would have to be, or maybe the Jerry Ford administration. Don Rumsfeld went over and, and sold him weapons of mass destruction. There's a famous picture of Don Rumsfeld shaking hands with Saddam Hussein. So what was the first big business to open in Iraq after the war was, quote, over? This was just last year, year and a half ago or so. It was the Bank of Iran, the Bank of Tehran, Iran. 
Iraq is now, you know, the majority of people in Iraq are actually Shiites, and, and Iraq is now largely controlled by Shiites, and it's aligned itself more closely with Iran than with us. Now, I'm not complaining about that. I mean, I, I think Iraq should have the, the right to determine their own fate and future, but, you know, if George W. Bush was trying to justify this in, in a geopolitical context, it makes absolutely no sense whatsoever. The only way that the war against Iraq makes any sense, and this is what Cindy Sheehan laid out in front of in front of uh, uh, John Conyers' commi commission when she testified before Congress, is that George W. Bush thought that being a wartime president would get him political capital that he could use when he was reelected in 2005, and sure enough, he tried to to privatize Social Security. And back in 1999, a year before he even was running for president, his family hired Mickey Herskowitz to write his biography, The Charge to Keep, and Mickey wrote the first draft, and then they found somebody else to write the second draft because Mickey didn't suck up enough. But he had, you know, almost 100 hours of audio tape recordings with George W. And he was interviewed by Robert Perry, and, and this is on the record with a journalist. Missy, Mickey Herskowitz, well, I'll, I'll let Cindy Sheehan share with you the actual quote. As a matter of fact, in interviews in 1999 with respected journalists and longtime Bush family friend Mickey Herskowitz, then Governor George Bush stated, one of the keys to being seen as a great leader is to be seen as commander in chief. My father had all this political capital built up when he drove the Iraqis out of Kuwait and he wasted it. If I have a chance to invade, if I had that much capital, I'm not going to waste it. I'm going to get everything passed that I want to get passed, and I'm going to have a successful presidency, end quote. There you go. It this is George like, W. Bush saying, you know, I'm going to become a you know, the wartime president. So James Madison wrote about this, how war gives the executive branch additional powers, and therefore it can be an incredibly corrupting influence. And beware of presidents who want to use war. And this was the argument that the Republicans were making in the 1930s, saying, oh, Franklin Roosevelt wants to use war with Germany or Japan to, to claim even more power than he's already taken with the New Deal. We can't let him do that. It's why Roosevelt, you know, ran when he ran for re-election in 1940 on the platform of I will not get us into World War II. Because the Republicans, had he not, I mean, you know, the Republicans, they were freaking out. We don't want to get into this war. Hitler's just fine. Thank you very much. Sort of. 15 minutes past the hour. What do we do? How do we prosecute George W. Bush? This is the Tom Hartman Program. And all of his cronies, these, these mass murderers from the Bush administration, why is there no accountability? 